September 6 was the six-year anniversary of my father's passing. My father died from leukemia and a bad heart. When he passed away, his heart was functioning at less than 24%. He had one working artery, two stints, a pacemaker, and a defibrillator in his heart. And if that wasn't enough, 87% of his bone marrow was infected with leukemia. Now what made this worse is that my father passed away on my first day of teacher's college. So I had to fly back from Thunder Bay to Toronto for the funeral. And being Jewish, in Jewish tradition, when somebody passes away, you do what's called a shiva, which literally mean, translates to to sit and for seven days to honor the person that has passed away. Except my father was a very proud man. So outside the immediate family, there was only three people that knew how sick he was. And from 7.30 in the morning till about 7.30 at night, every 15 minutes when people came over, I had to go over how sick my father was. His breakfast was 18 pills. So you can imagine how draining that is. Right after the Shiva was the high holidays for Jewish people, the Jewish New Year and Yom Kippur. So I ended up missing two and a half weeks of a nine week semester. When I came back to the university, the university was quite adamant that I drop out because I'd missed too much work. And I looked at the university and said, I promised my father on his deathbed that I will become an educator. So unless I flunk out, you're not kicking me out. Now for the next five and a half weeks, I would wake up between 5.30 and 6.30 a.m. And I would go to bed between 2.30 and 3.30 a.m seven days a week. Because I'm one of those old school typers that uses two fingers, who can relate? I think I counted that I typed and printed 4,600 pieces of paper in my first semester because I was doing nine courses. One of my assignments was 550 pages long and my professor asked me for more details. Can you believe that? Now what was interesting is, because I was getting an average of two hours of sleep, I was literally a walking zombie. zombie. I was walking around just eyes bloodshot. I could not see in front of me. And when I came into class, I knew that I had to change my energy in order to get my degree. But when I came into class, the 700 students that were there with me looked at me and went, that's the weird guy. He looks weird. He looks creepy. Not a single person asked me, is everything okay? Now, I was finishing yet another very long, tedious assignment uh, for Teachers College about 2.45 in the morning. And I got into bed. I looked up at the ceiling, and I'm like, Dad, I hope you're proud of me. I hope you see how seriously I've been taking Seizures College. Because up until the moment I did Teachers College, I was the black sheep of my family. Now, I went to the bathroom, and when I came back, my phone had turned on to this picture. And I just looked up at the ceiling and went, Thank you, Dad. I needed that. My father's passing taught me that life is very short. And we shouldn't have to wait till somebody is dead or dying to acknowledge them. So I'm going to ask you to turn to your left, smile, and turn to your right, and smile, and thank the people near, next to you. Thank you for playing full out. I appreciate that. 
See, it's a lot easier than you think. Life is full of great moments. But if you notice, it only takes a few negative experiences to create fear and doubt. So much so that we lose sight of who we are. Have you seen these people? They look and sound like this. Hey, how are you? Me, oh, same old, same old. They feel depressed and stopped in one or several areas of their lives for days, months, weeks, and even years. Have you seen them? Have you? Or you? Have you been one? We get stuck in the wheel of life. We get stuck in routine and responsibility. So what is the solution? It comes down to three words. Leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. It will change your life. Now picture this. It's my 29th birthday. My brother comes over and kidnaps me. He blindfolds me and we drive off. We arrive at our destination. He takes off the blindfold and I see, welcome to swoop skydiving. <laughs> wow, skydiving, didn't see that coming. Well, you've told me you've wanted to do this for years, it's experience of a lifetime, so we're here. I don't know what to say. This is amazing, this is unbelievable. This is insane, I'm not jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. I've already paid, so we're going. <laughs> Have you seen this form? It says, if the plane crashes and I die, we're not responsible. If the parachute doesn't open and I die, we're not responsible. If the parachute hits a power line and I die, we're not responsible. I don't want to die. I'm too young and too sexy. I have so much to live for. Joseph, take the leap of faith. Okay. The plane reaches 14,000 feet. The door swings open. 100 mile an hour wings are hitting my face. I can't feel my face. I turn around to my brother in one last name. I don't want to do this. <laughs> my brother goes, Joe. Just take the leap of faith. So, one, two, three. Ah! I took the leap of faith, literally. And it was horrifying. But I survived. When I landed, I felt I could do anything. I felt I was unstoppable. So the next day, I marched into my boss's office. Boss, I don't like the way you're doing things around here. Ever have a little too much face? <laughs> Do you think he made some changes? You bet he did. He fired me. <laughs> but you know what? A week later, I became a recruiter, and I never looked back. I took a leap of faith, and it changed my life. Even the smallest step can make such a huge difference. Do you miss someone? Call them. Hi, is this John? No, sorry, wrong number. Call again. Do you hate your job? Start looking for a new one. Do you wish you knew how to dance? Take some dance lessons. But do something. Take a leap of faith. It doesn't have to be jumping out of an airplane, or running around naked. Whatever your leap of faith is yours. But the most important thing is, don't wait, because life passes you by quickly. Thank you. <laughs>